capable of defending themselves. That's the message uh, from the Girls on Fire campaign by Gun Owners South Africa. Let's find out from them exactly what they mean by this. Joining us is Lynette Oxley. She's the organizer of this campaign. Lynette, good evening. And good thanks evening. for your time. Very interesting take uh, that I see here that uh, on how women can defend themselves. I'm very interested firstly in where it says, it seems to you that victimhood is the new thing. Victimhood is the fashion statement of the 21st century. What are you telling us? I'm telling you that, uh, you know, it's, it's a thing. People say that women, women are victims. They look at women as victims, and women look at themselves as victims. Um, it's like it's, uh, it's a given that women should be victims. Um, I don't believe that women should be victims. Um, they can look after themselves. Um, in what way? I mean, we, we understand, yes, we're always told, go out, take a class, learn how to do this, keep your pepper spray in your purse. What are you telling women to do? I'm telling women to actually take control of their lives. Um, when I do courses uh, for ladies, and that is from ladies that's girls that's 12 years old to ladies that's 80 years old all over the country, the first thing that I say to them, look at your environment first. Um, be aware of what's going on around you. So avoid places that you are going to be unsafe. Um, be aware of these people around you that is actually looking at you as a victim. And as a last resort, and that I mean is the last resort, then be able to defend yourself in the best possible manner. And unfortunately, guns are the best possible manner. Um, and you do that in a legal and a controlled manner. Uh, you basically get good training. Uh, you know the law around firearms, and um, you go out, and uh, as a last resort, if you have to defend yourself, you do defend yourself. So, you know, and, and I'm going to pose this question to you, to you, and it's an age-old question. What about, you know, the, the thought out there, the feeling out there that often gun owners, guns are used against them in certain times? <sighs> It's a, it's, a, it's a lie. Um, it's a lie that, that's been told all over. If you are aware of your gun uh, at all times, if you are trained well, um, you, you are aware of your surroundings, uh, then the gun is not going to be used again, against you. Um, you go according to the law, you have control over your gun. But I'm, I'm thinking about in the moment, Lynette. I mean, you don't see an attack like this coming. You yes. don't see. I mean, this is a girl who went to the post office, was told to come back later to collect her package, and this is what happened. She was called to the back, possibly the person said to her, come and see what your package is here, come find. I don't know what, how he got her to get to the back there. You don't see that coming. At what point do you get to pull out that firearm and defend yourself? The story is, firstly, I would have uh, been very uh, uh, suspicious if somebody said to me, come into the back. So my first thing is to say to ladies, if something feels wrong, don't go there. Try and get out of the situation. If he goes into the back, he's not going to be expecting you as a lady to defend yourself in an effective manner. And there's way that you can defend yourself in an effective manner. My husband calls me his first responder. If we are in a situation, say, for example, in a restaurant, he's quite a big person, um, they're not going to even look at me, the old tunny sitting there in the corner. Uh, and I know that if I have to uh, defend myself and my husband and the people around me, that I'm able to do so, because it's not expected. Okay, well, you say use a gun as a last resort. What other ways? Not everyone's comfortable with a gun. Not everybody's going to want to carry a gun in their purse. We also have to think about we're so jittery at the moment. What if we end up actually hurting the wrong person and somebody who actually didn't mean to hurt us? So what are the other ways okay. that we can defend ourselves? Okay, I'm just actually going to go a step backwards. Um, when you carry a gun, it actually makes you less jittery, okay? Um, a lot of ladies, if you speak to them, the first thing is they say is when they start carrying a gun, they are actually a lot calmer. They know that they can, whatever they do is going to have serious consequences. So the first thing is that it actually doesn't make you more jittery, it makes you more calm. So you're going to get out of the situation if you can. Um, so. I do feel that a stronger attacker, um, if a person is on tick or on any other drugs, uh, he's going to come for you. If, he's, if you're going to try and pepper spray him or karate chop him, you're not going to be able to defend yourself. But for people who are not comfortable carrying a gun, and not everybody is going to be okay with it, they, 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 
they might not want to. What, what are the other ways? Then go and take self-defense uh, uh, classes. Go and take classes where you are going to be taught to be aware of your situation. One of the things that I wrote in the article that uh, that statement came out, which that's a small part of it, mm -hmm. is um, be aware of what's going on around you. I see ladies with windows opens at, open at rob robots, totally disengaged, uh, busy looking at their Facebook pages. Start becoming aware of what's going on around you. You are, people are looking at you as a victim. If you do end up shooting somebody that you, you, you know, was about to attack you, didn't quite get there, the attack had happened, you managed to stop it. In a country where we see very little justice for victims, and I think you know that, it's going to be, it's going to come up to you as a potential victim to prove that this was self-defense. Doesn't that create a bit of a difficulty and a wrangle as well? To say, the I thought are, I was going to be raped. No, the law is on our side. Um, I tell the ladies that I deal with on, in this courses, um, if a person comes to you and he's got a knife and a gun, do you know what is in his mind? Is he going to stop by stealing your car? Is he going to stop by raping you? Is he going to stop uh, by killing you? Um, you do not know what is in, in that person's mind. So you need to take the actions that is uh, appropriate to that situation. And the law is on your side. Um, the, basically, the three things that you have to do for a legal, uh, a legal shooting is you, it's got to be the attack must be unlawful. It's got to be against person and not property. So not, uh, uh, you must be threatened as a person. And the last thing is it has to be in the process or imminent. It's busy happening. So you can't say, oh, that person over there is going to uh, do something. Do you need something. to give a warning to say, stop, I have a gun? You can't, uh, okay. in most circumstances, you can't. Uh, it depends on the circumstances, but in most circumstances, there's no way that you can be able to give a warning. Okay, well, thanks for that. Very interesting. And I suppose we could debate this for hours to we come, can. but we are in that position where we need to look at every way to protect ourselves. And I suppose it might, be, it might work for some and it might not work for others. Thank you very much. Thank That's you very, very much, Rebecca, for having me. Thanks, Thank you very you. much. Have a good evening. Thank you. All right, well, still to come here on South Africa tonight, anti-government.